Hello, everyone. This is Entrepreneurs of Faith, a Sunday episode of Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the parable of the talents and four investment lessons we can learn from it. In Matthew 25, 14 through 30, Jesus Christ shared a parable with his disciples. In the story, a man was traveling to a faraway country. So he called his servants before he left and gave them talents, which was a form of money at the time. To the first one, he gave five talents. To the second, he gave two talents. And finally, to the third man, he gave one talent. Then the man went on his way. The first servant with the five talents went and traded his talents, so he gained five more, doubling his initial capital. The second servant traded until he gained two talents, also doubling his initial capital. Finally, the third servant went and buried his talent in the earth, so he wouldn't lose it. After a long time, the servant's master returned. When he did, the first servant brought his five extra talents with him, and the second servant brought his two extra talents. The Lord responded to them both by saying, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That's Matthew 25, 20. Then the third servant came and told his master that he was afraid, so he hid his talent in the earth and didn't do anything good with it. When his master learned this, he said, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. And that's Matthew 25, 26 through 27. The master then took the servant's one talent and gave it to his first servant with 10 talents. From this parable, we can learn two lessons, one about money and the other about our talents and gifts from God. We can apply both lessons to our businesses. A talent in the time of Christ, like I said, was a unit of money. In the parable, the servants who invested and traded their talents Both doubled the amount they had originally received. The one who hoarded his money and buried it in the ground gained nothing. As entrepreneurs, we can learn a principle of investment. God wants us to be smart about our money management and learn how to invest. We can also interpret the parable as if the master was giving his servants talents in the way we define the word today. God gives each individual unique gifts and talents, and he expects us to use them to do good. As entrepreneurs, we can use our skills and abilities to bless the lives of others. As we share our talents, we will be blessed with more. In the parable, the servants who invested their money doubled what they had originally been given, while the one who hid his money, or rather deposited it into a safety deposit box in the ground, gained nothing. As entrepreneurs, we can learn that God rewards those who take what they have to accomplish good things and do more good with it. This includes gaining more wealth from the talents we've been given. In our ventures, one way we can increase our monetary value is by taking capital risk. In the parable, the master's investment strategy is similar to many business owners today. There are four principles of good investing we can apply from the parable of the talents. Number one, invest in a company we know and like. This is very important. We should only invest in a company we know and like. The Institute of Faith, Work, and Economics explained that in the parable, the master demonstrates trust in his servants. He must have been familiar with his servants' track records and trusted them accordingly. He selected three servants and weighed them according to their abilities. So he gave 62.5% of his money to the lead manager, 25% to the second, and 12.5% to the third. The source is Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. We need to make sure we are making smart investments. Being smart about our investment requires us to do research. We should never invest in a company we know nothing about. Peter Lynch, an American investor and philanthropist, said, quote, An important key to investing is to remember stocks are not lottery tickets, unquote. I think this is a powerful statement. Investing is not about luck. It is not about throwing our money to a company and hoping for the best. Investment requires much more research than that for us to be wise stewards. 
Benjamin Graham is one of the most famous investors. He is universally recognized as the father of two fundamental investment disciplines, security analysis and value investing. Whenever he invested in a company, he searched for those with strong balance sheets, those with little debt, above average profit margins, and large cash flows. Uh, source, Investopedia. Just as the master in the parable of Benjamin Graham, we need to become familiar with the track records of the companies we invest in. If we do this, we minimize the risk we need to take to invest. Number two, we need to diversify our investments. We should diversify the investments just like the master in the parable did. He didn't invest all of his money in one servant. He split it up between the three servants. Can you imagine if he would have put all of his money with the servant who buried it in the ground? Because he diversified, he was able to get return from the other two servants. Successful entrepreneurs should take time and consideration when choosing how to invest their money. And they should invest their money in different places. One example of a great investor is Gary Vaynerchuk, an entrepreneur, author, speaker, and internet personality with a net worth of about $160 million. Vaynerchuk was an early investor in Twitter, Tumblr, Uber, and Snap. And his Vayner RSE investment portfolio currently lists about 80 companies. Source, CNBC. When CNBC asked him what his secret was, he explained, we need to not only know and like the company we invest in, but we also should invest in multiple companies. He said, quote, you may pick the wrong company, and this is why you want to diversify, unquote. Source, CNBC. Number three, we need to take risks. The parable of the talents also recognizes that making investment requires some risk. The third servant who buried his one talent because he was afraid of losing it gained nothing. Without any risk, there will be no return. We need to be wise, but we need to take wise risk. Benjamin Graham said, quote, successful investing is about managing risk, not avoiding it, unquote. We have to understand that we can't be a successful investor without the courage to take a leap and trust in a company enough to invest in them. However, with that, there are ways to reduce risk. This includes doing our research, knowing the company, and diversifying our investments, as I said above. Risk comes from not knowing what we are doing. But if we do the right research, we can minimize our risk and feel confident in our investment decisions. Number four, be patient. At the end of the day, good investing comes down to being patient. We won't make a lot of money short term. Investing is all about long term success. In the parable, it says the master who gave his talents was traveling to a quote, far country, unquote. It also says he returned, quote, after a long time, unquote. We shouldn't expect to gain immediate return on our investment or ROI. Sometimes that does happen, but that's the exception to the rule and should not be our expectation. We need to wait and know that investing requires patience. However, this doesn't just mean that investing in a company and then leaving it there for years without checking on it is the right thing to do. We need to make sure that we review our investments after certain periods of time. Just as the master in the parable came back to see how his servants were doing, we should check in on our investments to make sure we're making the most of them. Quote, investment is an asset or an item that is purchased with the hope that it will generate income or appreciate in the future. Unquote. Source, Investment Brothers. The second lesson we can take from the parable of the talents is to take our gifts God has given us and use them for good. God has given each of us our own unique talents we can use to serve and bless others. Once we discover what our gifts are, we can use them to help our customers and team members. While God may not give everyone equal gifts, he doesn't compare us to others either. He compares us to ourselves. In the parable, the master rewarded both the first and second servants equally. While the first servant made more money or developed more talents than the second servant, they both did the same with what they were given. They each doubled what they had, and both were made rulers over many things and entered into the joy of the Lord. In Matthew 25, 15, it says, quote, And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, unquote. The master gave talents according to each servant's ability, 
He never expected the servant with one talent to come back with more than the servant who'd been given five. God knows our different abilities. He knows our strengths and our weaknesses. We will be rewarded according to what we do with what we have, not according to how we do compared to others. However, if we hide our talents and don't share them with others, God will take them away. In Matthew 25, 29, it says, For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. Unquote. Milton Hershey is a great example of using our unique talents to serve others. Hershey was an American chocolatier and businessman. He pioneered the manufacture of caramel with fresh milk. He also developed a unique recipe for chocolate with his apprenticeships and started a caramel company that sold for $1 million in the year 1900, Source Business Collective. He then moved on to found the chocolate company Hershey, a company that now has a net worth of about $35 billion, the Source Macro Trends. With each of the abilities God gives us, we can use them to find success in our businesses. As we share our talents with others, we will be blessed. God expects us to work hard in improving what we've been given. On our entrepreneurial journey, we need to work hard and use our God-given gifts wisely. As we do this and help others to the best of our abilities, God will bless us. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, we learn that we should only invest in a company we know and like. Number two, we should diversify our investments. Number three, successful investing is about managing risk, not avoiding it. Number four, at the end of the day, good investing comes down to being patient and setting our expectations on long-term success. Number five, God has given each of us our own unique talents and we can use them to serve others. As we do this and use our talents to help others, we will be rewarded with additional gifts. Number six, if we hide our talents, God will take them away from us. Number seven, God knows our different abilities. He knows our strengths and weaknesses. We will be rewarded according to what we do with what we've been given, not according to how we compare to others. If this episode of Entrepreneurs of Faith resonated with you, please subscribe for free to Monetization Nation so you can receive future episodes of Entrepreneurs of Faith. You can, number one, subscribe to the free Monetization Nation e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast and YouTube channel. And number three, you can follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. How do you determine what investments to make? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining us for this episode. I wish you success in your investments of your money and your talents.